Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna discuss why I don't worry about devaluations. The points and miles game is a lot of fun. We get to travel around the world in luxury and stay at some of the nicest properties for a fraction of the cost of what other people are paying. Rich or poor, we all wish to explore, and with points and miles, it allows us to do that regardless of what tax bracket we're in. But when you play the points and miles game for long enough, there'll end up being a number of different changes that will happen that you won't be happy with. Whether it be awards that used to book all the time becoming harder to find, or it'll end up being partnerships that used to like end up cutting ties, or what most people talk about that they're fearful of is devaluations. For those of you who aren't familiar with devaluations, this just ends up being when a program makes a specific award they used to book for one price, now more expensive. So for example, say you used to fly over to France all the time from Los Angeles and you would do it for only 10,000 flying blue miles. And then all of a sudden one day when you're planning on sipping some champagne or underneath the Eiffel Tower, you go and search for the same award and you see that now it's costing 15,000 points instead of only 10,000 points. This would end up being a 50% increase in cost from what you previously booked for the same exact award. This can end up being incredibly frustrating and also change up your plans. Because if you happen to have 20,000 points saved up for this specific flight, well, when you go to try to make this booking, you're gonna be short 10,000 points for the return flight. This is the reason why in the points and miles game, it's recommended for people to earn themselves transferable currencies versus earning miles for just one specific program. With transferable currencies, you have the option to transfer over your points to many different airline and hotel programs that are partnered with the bank. So if you happen to have 20,000 points as a transferable currency, you have the option of being able to transfer them over to your Flying Blue account to fly over to France or if you want to, you could transfer it over to another airline that either you want to fly with or ends up having a better deal for that same exact flight. But if you only have flying blue miles to fly on Air France, well then you are trapped for whatever they end up doing with their program. So if they decide to increase this economy flight over to Paris for 50% more, well then now you have to pay 50% more to be able to book this flight. But what can end up happening in many cases is that Although Flying Blue, which is the award program for Air France, may have decided to change this award from being 10,000 points to 15,000 points, well, Virgin Atlantic is also in Sky Team, which means that sometimes Air France's flights are bookable with Virgin Atlantic points. And this exact same flight, instead of it costing 15,000 points, it may only cost 12,500 Virgin Atlantic miles. So while you may end up being short for how many points are gonna be required for this trip, you still have the option to be able to transfer them over to Virgin Atlantic and be able to get a cheaper deal than what Flying Blue is offering. So the recommendation to get yourself transferable currencies and then leave them in the account until you end up seeing the award being available before you decide to transfer them over to that program is a great recommendation for anyone who is a beginner in the game. Now everything that I've spoken about so far has been for beginners, but now I wanna to transition to a more advanced level. What I've evolved to as someone who's more advanced in the game is a person who speculatively transfers over to a number of different programs that I find to be trustworthy and have a track record of having competitive deals in the award space. The reason that I do this is because I went back and looked at the history of many different devaluations. And I noticed that there tends to be certain trends that have continued. The first ends up being with US carriers. Now when you look at the history of different devaluations, U.S. carriers end up being some of the least trustworthy programs out there. The reason being is because outside of American Airlines, if you go look at the other really popular domestic airlines, you'll end up noticing that they have devalued their programs so much to the point where if you are more advanced in the game, it doesn't make a ton of sense to chase after their miles. Now, I have a theory for why domestic popular airlines have devalued their award programs so much. And my theory is that Americans spend a ton of money on their co-branded credit cards so much that it generates a ton of financial gains for these domestic airlines. Way more than what award programs are generating for financial gain for foreign airlines. To the point where a number of domestic airlines award programs are more valuable than the airlines themselves. We have to remember that every single time a person swipes one of their co-branded airline credit cards, they are essentially buying miles because instead of them getting cash back, they're getting themselves a form of miles. Delta said that 1% of the US GDP goes through their cards. The US GDP is over $25 trillion, which means that American Express is literally buying hundreds of billions, possibly even trillions of Delta Sky Miles each year. And Delta gets nearly $7 billion of revenue from their award program. We as Americans take for granted the different type of gains we can end up getting from our credit cards. 
If you ever travel around the world and ask other people about what cards they have, or what type of benefits they have, and then explain what type of cards you have, you will be shocked when you end up comparing US cards versus foreign credit cards. The only other countries that I found that don't have absolutely terrible cards are Australia and Canada. And people from those countries will end up doing tricks so they can end up getting themselves some American credit cards. That is how good our cards are over here. When foreign airlines see how much our domestic airlines are making just off of their loyalty program, they begin to ask themselves the question, how can I get myself a piece of that? And I think that this is the reason why most of the times foreign airlines end up having better deals because they end up seeing that the US market is a market that can end up buying many of these different miles. So what they'll do is they'll offer cheaper deals and also cheaper ways to purchase their points and miles so they can end up getting themselves a part of the revenue that the domestic airlines get from their loyalty programs. I think this is one of the reasons why you'll end up seeing transfer bonuses from banks over to British Airways, Virgin Atlantic, or Flying Blue program, but you don't end up seeing transfer bonuses over to programs like United or Delta. So what this tells me is that Airlines like United and Delta feel like they're in a league of their own and they don't end up needing to compete because most of the people who are gonna be end up redeeming miles are gonna be Americans and most Americans aren't really paying as much attention to foreign airline programs. So the odds of an airline such as Delta having a devaluation, I feel is greater than an airline such as like KLM or Air France with their Flying Blue program. So I don't feel that there should be any speculative transfers over to domestic airlines. But why I have been speculatively transferring over to these different foreign airlines is because with my research, I've noticed that with these specific trustworthy foreign airlines, although they may end up having devaluations to their program, they do not devaluate their program to the point where they're not competitive anymore. Is there a possibility they end up making their award deals become more expensive? Yes, but with inflation, everything becomes more expensive. So instead of there being a 5% increase every single year with these different award programs, over the course of four years, you'll end up seeing one devaluation of somewhere roughly near maybe like 30%. Now you may be wondering, JP, which one of these foreign airlines are these trustworthy ones that you speak of? Now everyone may end up having different ones that they feel are trustworthy, but for myself, these end up being programs that have competitive prices, but also end up having transfer bonuses to the different banks that they are partnered with. Transfer bonuses are huge and people do not rave about them enough because they are the closest thing to actual free travel and they also help combat devaluation. Now the programs that I consider to be the trustworthy ones are going to be Air Canada, Virgin Atlantic, British Airways Avios, or just Avios as a whole, and then also Flying Blue. Some others may end up putting Avianca also in this group, but for myself, I just prefer those other four programs. If you look into the history of these programs, you'll begin to realize that, yes, they have had devaluations in the last three years or some type of changes to their program. Flying Blue is one of the exception to where prices didn't end up going up, they actually end up going down because the previous year they used to have business class if you wanted to go over to France to be 80,000, and if you wanted to go over to Amsterdam, it was 65,000, but now they made it 50,000 for both programs if you wanna fly in business class from the US over to either France or the Netherlands or possibly even connecting on from there in Europe. But they did increase their costs when it comes to partner Delta flights, so they did have some form of a devaluation in the past few years. But when you look at these four different programs, you'll notice that they have a few things in common. The first one will be that they are partnered with many of the different major banks, which makes them significantly easier to earn than say Delta Sky Miles that's only partnered with Amex, United that's partnered with Chase, and then American Airlines that's partnered with Citi. So even though Citi may end up having better deals than what British Airways is gonna be charging for a one world partner booking, British Airways miles are significantly easier to come by. So you could possibly even argue that for people in the points and miles game, the award deals with American Airlines aren't necessarily better than what British Airways is charging because of the fact that you could earn yourself British Airways miles 3x times faster than you could American Airlines miles. But American Airlines isn't charging a third of the cost for this award booking. The second thing that they all have in common is that they all seem to have a yearly transfer bonus with one or many of these different banks. When Virgin Atlantic devalued their sweet spot with booking a a first class, it didn't really bother me that much because although I would have preferred to pay the cheaper price, what I realized was that if I timed out getting myself a transfer bonus over to Virgin Atlantic, then the award price for this first class flight wasn't that much more when it comes to how many points I needed to transfer over to be able to get myself this first class seat. So because of taking advantage of the transfer bonus, it only cost me slightly higher than what it previously was before the devaluation. And if you go back years ago, these airline programs had transfer bonuses with the banks, 
but they were like 10, maybe 15%. Now you consistently see them at being 20, 25, and even 30% transfer bonuses. And the last thing that I've noticed that they have in common is that they all tend to still have competitive award pricing even after they end up having a devaluation. Take for example, Avianca, which is one of the most recent programs that had a pretty big devaluation. Did their costs go up? Yes. Are they still competitive in some instances when it comes to either booking with them or Air Canada? Sure. Are they still cheaper than United? Pretty much everywhere across the board when there ends up being award partner bookings offered. Somewhat of the same thing could even be said for when it comes to Virgin Atlantic devaluating the Delta One business class flight over to Europe. Did they increase the taxes and fees to close to about $1,000 for this already pretty difficult to be able to book award flight, yes they did. But if you really think about it, what is still the best option to be able to book yourself Delta One over to Europe? It's either booking with Virgin Atlantic that has the possibility of getting yourself a transfer bonus, yes you're having to pay near $1,000 in taxes and fees which does stink, or you could end up spending 400,000 Delta Sky miles for the exact same flight. One thing that is becoming pretty obvious is that these domestic airlines don't seem to like it when these foreign airlines are undercutting their award pricing, especially for domestic flights. They would rather us use their miles for these award bookings instead of using the foreign airlines miles. So what they've done is either make these awards become more difficult to be able to find or change the agreements that they have with these different programs to make these awards more expensive, making us not want to book them as frequently. So for the last year or so, I've done many different speculative transfers. And from doing all these different speculative transfers, I've been able to take myself quite a few trips for very, very cheap. I also have kept the mindset of earn and burn. You have these points, you wanna take a trip, you see the award space for this trip, book it and take that trip. I booked TAP Portugal for next year for 35,000 Avianca miles. This deal is no longer there and will probably never come back. Now with me saying that, there's probably someone who's thinking to themselves, well this is the reason why you shouldn't do any speculative transfers, because if I end up doing it to Avianca, I wouldn't be able to make this award booking. Well the way I would counter that would end up being, although I end up getting it at an incredible deal of only 35,000 points, Avianca has had consistent 25% transfer bonuses over from Citibank, and they've also come out with an Avianca card, we can end up getting yourself a 10% rebate on award bookings. So although you may not be able to get this award deal for the same 35,000 points, if you end up taking advantage of both the 25% transfer bonus and also the 10% return on your points, you can still end up getting this business class flight over to Portugal for a pretty decent price. Now, as I said before I start telling you what I have been doing with my points, that this is a way more advanced strategy. If you are someone who's not really advanced when it comes to award bookings, then I don't want you to say, okay, JP, I've taken what you said from this video, and now I'm gonna grab all of my transferable currencies and transfer it over to a program that has a transfer bonus. Please, please, please do not do that. This is a more advanced strategy. So if you've never transferred over your points to any program before or made any type of award booking through partners, then you shouldn't be doing any type of speculative transfers. But if you're someone who's in the points and miles game and has transferred over to partners and knows that they're gonna be transferring over to some of those same partners again in the future, and you see that there is a transfer bonus to that program and you are flushed with transferable currencies, if you decided to grab a chunk of them and transfer over to that program, it wouldn't be affecting if you need to make yourself possibly a different booking that you don't fully have planned. I don't think that it's a bad risk to take. Now, could this eventually backfire on me and one of these programs that I speculatively transfer to end up devaluing their program into oblivion? Yes, it could. But I have been doing quite a few speculative transfers over the last year, and there's been way more upside than there have been losses. And I don't fear devaluations, because if one of these programs does end up having a devaluation, well, history has shown that they still end up having competitive prices for their award bookings. And fortunately for me, I was able to take advantage of these transfer bonuses, which is why I do these speculative transfers, so I can end up getting the cheapest price locked in. But my strategy is definitely not for everybody. But for those of you who are more advanced, think about it because it may end up paying off. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below, what are your thoughts of speculative transfers and do you end up fearing about devaluations? Now, if you haven't been interested in any cards, check out my links in the description box to learn more. If you do decide to use any of my links, it does really help out the channel and I'll be incredibly thankful for your support. If you haven't had any questions, drop those down in the comment section down below. I'll do the best I can to answer them. And if you have real likes video, do me a favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this video, and have a beautiful rest of your day. Peace.